Welcome back to the graveyard, everybody. My name is Mads, and today we're going to be continuing my series all about alternative brands. Today's subject is not going to be surprising to anyone who's been in the subculture for any decent length of time, because today we're talking about Dolls Kill. Dolls Kill arguably is more famous for being controversial and problematic than it is for anything that it sells, and they brought that on themselves. The owner will do everything in her power to act like she's just a victim and everyone is just hating on her for no reason. But she's been doing shit for years that actively hurts people. So let's get into it. I'm going to begin by going over the brand's about page just like I will for every brand because I think it's only fair that they get to try to tell us what they think they stand for. And then we have a chance to prove them wrong if we need to. So first glance... Unleash your inner and then a million different things flashing on the screen right there. A person in kind of streetwear type fashion. And I guess this girl is in what I'd call club wear. It doesn't really give a mission statement right off the bat. The pictures just kind of show that Dolls Kill is a multi-brand e-commerce. I remember always having this desire to go against the grain. And that feeling has never left me. I don't think it ever leaves those who are blessed with it. Here we call it the I don't give a fuck attitude. Some have it more than others, but it doesn't matter because it's inside all of us. Unleash it. And then we just have blacked out text and then we are back of the class in front of the club. It's a nothing burger. All they said was something from the brand owner herself talking about herself. And it's like, okay, that's fine for like your own personal Instagram account. But what does your brand stand for? As someone who's never shopped on Dolls Kill, I don't garner anything from that. They have a pretty basic website, as you can see, just Dolls Kill and then new festival collabs and sale. So pretty straightforward. It's not necessarily a bad thing to have a really stripped back website like this. In fact, it can be better when you have multiple different brands selling through you because it won't be as confusing to get through. So now that we have as close to an idea of what Dolls Kill claims it represents, Let's take a look at the price point because that's a really important thing to be thinking about. A lot of people on Reddit have claimed that despite all the controversies around this brand, they still shop at Dolls Kill because it's, in their opinion, one of the only affordable brands out there. So just how affordable are they really? Looks very, very uh, elegant, these new pieces. So we have a mini dress, very fluffy sleeves, very pretty, but also a little bit on the basic side, $128. <laughs> Sensual Premonition Maxi Dress, $108. Whatever brand this is, they're pricey. They're definitely pricey. They're up there. And this one looks like it's more anime inspired and streetwear inspired. So $58 for a cropped Inuyasha sweater. $15 for a beanie isn't too bad. A zip-up hoodie is 68 smackaroos and $38 for a t-shirt. So the $38 isn't bad. That's like hot topic prices. A lot of the Inuyasha stuff, in fact, looks like it's actually very affordable. But then again, we come to a different brand entirely. And once more, we have a pair of $78 plain washed out blue jeans. Nothing special about them at all. $78. Now, arguably, especially under the festival tab, there's actually a lot of items that are massively discounted. They're on a really good sale. So you'll have some things that start at like $40 to $70 that have gone down to like half price. So I will give them that. Let's take a look at the sale tab. $12, $16-ish, $24. Some of this is honestly more affordable than most stores like Hot Topic and stuff. Now, I still wouldn't call this the cheapest alternative store on the planet, but yeah, I mean, I understand now why people say this is an affordable alternative place for them. Unfortunately, due to the fact that they've gotten into a lot of controversy throughout the years, it's very difficult to find much information about them online. And as we already established, their about page is pretty sparse. So, Luckily, I found a handy-dandy Wikipedia page on them, and we're going to go through that now. 
Dolls Kill was co-founded in 2011 by Shadi Lynn, a former DJ who went by the stage name DJ Shadi Lynn and her husband Bobby Farahi. Previously, Farahi was a founder and CEO of Multivision Inc., a broadcast monitoring service that was sold to Bacon's Information in 2005. After Farahi sold his first company, the couple started Dolls Kill, and it has reportedly been profitable since its launch. Lynn originally entered the e-commerce business by selling clothing on eBay. Later, Dolls Kill was launched as an online marketplace for eccentric accessories such as colorful foxtails before expanding its business to a full clothing and accessories online store. The idea for the company stemmed from Lynn's experiences as a DJ while traveling to music festivals on tour. And right there, that last sentence there actually explains a lot about what we saw on the website, the fact that... She was inspired by basically festival wear, the stuff people wear outside in the summer for things like Burning Man and stuff. In 2014, Dolls Kill secured $5 million in a Series A round of funding from Mavron, a Seattle-based venture capital firm who has also invested in companies such as Shutterfly, eBay, Zoo Lily, and Pinkberry. After the funding round, Bessie McLaughlin, former CEO of Hot Topic, joined the company's board of directors. Dolls Kill was the fastest growing private company in the San Francisco Bay Area based on the revenue percent growth in 2014. Now, regardless of your thoughts on Shadi Lynn, that's pretty impressive for a small startup to secure that kind of funding and take on a CEO of already a huge, widely known alternative brand is amazing. In 2018, the brand licensed and relaunched the Delius brand with a 1990s throwback theme. In December of that year, the brand raised $18 million in a funding round. So there we go. It did not begin life as a multi-brand e-commerce. That, in fact, didn't really happen until quite a few years into the brand in 2018 with that launch of Delius. And that did so well that she just kind of kept having more brands want to collaborate with her and it ended up ultimately working out really really well for her i also found some more information i found this old 2015 article and in it he actually showed screenshots of what the website looked like in 2015 so we can get a better sense of its past so right here this is a screenshot he had of the christmas season on dolls kill in 2015 the first thing that I personally noticed, and I'm not trying to be nasty here, is look at how normie this website looked. Tell me that if you didn't see the Dolls Kill logo up there, if you saw this, you would honestly think, oh yeah, that's an edgy brand. That's an alternative brand. This to me could be mistaken for ASOS in 2015, for H&M, Topshop, any of that kind of normie store. And there's nothing wrong with those stores. But like I just mentioned, nothing about this strikes me as being alternative or edgy in any way. So let's go ahead and see the other screenshot that this guy kindly provided because I was like, okay, really normie here, but let's give them the benefit of the doubt and see if they were supplying any other forms of clothing styles. And this is what I found. This definitely looks more in line with that festival and club wear style that Shadi Lynn said she was inspired by. And... The bottom row, it's cute, it's clearly festival wear, but it doesn't set itself apart from any other brand to me. If I looked at that, I wouldn't say that is 100% only a doll's kill style. It could be mistaken for essentially any other festival clothing brand to me. In the next segment of the video, I'm going to be going over the numerous controversies that Dolls Kill has found itself in over the years. So I'm offering a trigger warning right now. The rest of the video is going to be very difficult if you've gone through any of these things. I'm going to be covering topics of racism, anti-Semitic behavior, and of ableism. So if any of that is going to be too much for you to deal with right now, I suggest you turn the video off now. Unfortunately, one of the first controversies that tends to come up outside of the BLM one when you type in Dolls Kill Controversies in a Google search is the fact that on multiple occasions they have been accused of art theft. I don't know what it is about specifically alternative brands and art theft, but Hot Topic's been accused of it a bunch of times, Dolls Kill, Kill Star way too many of them. Considering the fact that all of us tend to enjoy a certain type of aesthetic that's very similar to one another, and a lot of people in the alternative subculture are artists who would gladly do this work either for free for their portfolio or very cheap for these brands, especially small startups. There's just no excuse for this. 
I already went over this ad nauseum in my other video, but the long and short of it is it's never okay to steal somebody's art. It doesn't matter how small that creator is because at the end of the day, it's very expensive, it's very time consuming, and it's very difficult for many small artists to copyright every single piece that they create. On top of that, many small artists, regardless of how big a size platform they tend to have, do not have the money or time to dedicate to taking these giant brands who already have lawyers ready and waiting for them to court. So a lot of these brands know they can just get away with it until they get canceled online. But we also all know how effective cancellation is. One of the big problems with Dolls Kill is as soon as people realize this and we're like, hey, there's art theft all over your website, you should probably do something about this. They do not respond promptly when issues like this arise. Apart from that, when they eventually do respond, it tends to be very snippy, very nasty. It's very defensive. They take every bit of criticism as a personal attack on the brand owner for some weird reason, and you simply can't behave that way. You are a brand owner. You're the face of something, a worldwide business. You need to act like one. Another issue that has come up over the years with Dolls Kill is the fact that through their own brand and, again, some of the brands that sell through them, there have been numerous instances where pieces of clothing had text written on them that glorified mental illness. That It turned it into something cute and fun and sweet and silly. And it's simply not. Now, you shouldn't, you know, put mental illness in some dark corner of the room and forget all about it, pretend it doesn't exist. That doesn't help people. But there's raising awareness for a mental illness and there's exploiting it for profit, which is more of what was going on with these issues. Now, if they wanted to say, let's bring awareness toward mental illness because it does exist within the goth subculture and other alternative subcultures, even though it's really hard for us to admit that, what they could have done is look at the bigger picture. A lot of alternative people have a hard time talking about and accepting their mental illness because so many people that don't exist in the subcultures have used it for years as an excuse to make fun of the way that we look. They're like, oh, if someone has really wacky eyeliner or black lipstick and black hair and stuff, or they drive a hearse or something, they must be mentally ill. Oh, I bet they cut themselves at night. We've all had people make those nasty jokes, which, how are those funny? I really need someone to explain it to me because I never understood how mocking someone for wanting to leave this plane of existence was a funny thing. One of two things is happening. Either you're just a dick for thinking that suicide is funny, or the person could actually be suicidal and you just gave them further reason to carry that act out now. Can you live with that? But because people use it to mock us, a lot of us have a hard time accepting when we have mental illness. I went through that myself when I was a kid, that I was like, well, I don't want to prove them right by going and getting therapy and getting help because I I already am being treated like shit by these people. I can't face the idea that they were right about something. They aren't right. They never were right for treating you or anyone else like that or me. It's never okay to mock someone's mental struggles. And it's never okay to mock the way someone looks, you know? There's just no reason for it. But it is a problem. Mental illness exists in the alternative subcultures, and a lot of us don't get help. So what they could have done is a fundraiser. They could have done really beautiful designs with artists who have that mental illness and said, make me a beautiful piece of art that represents both the beauty and the pain of your mental illness. We're going to put it on some t-shirts. We're going to sell it for like double the price and put a lot of the profit back into foundations to raise awareness for these mental illnesses. That would have been beautiful. Another issue that has come up with Dolls Kill, both again as a brand and with the brands that they have carried in the past, is the fact that they are racist. Full-on blatant racism. They have had t-shirts in the past that said things like, Goth is white. As I mentioned in the Killstar video, if you watched that, they have had Nazi designs on their merch before. You can't take that any other way. It's just racist and anti-Semitic and hateful. And during the Black Lives Matter protests at their height after George Floyd's murder and Breonna Taylor's murder, of course, they backed the police. Not only did they have a heavy police presence at their warehouse to keep the riffraff out, 
but they made excuses for why they decided that was a good idea. You can actually read more about this issue in the alternative press, and I'll be linking that in the description below, because they did a wonderful article all about why people were so angry. This came out in early June of 2020, and it says, Earlier this week, people began calling for a boycott of fashion brands Dolls Kill following the owner's comment on the Black Lives Matter protests. Shadi Lynn shared an image of her storefront in Los Angeles surrounded by police with a caption allegedly in support of the officers. Now, after the continued backlash, the brand is sharing a statement to hold themselves accountable for being too slow, quote, to show their support of Black Lives Matter and their plans moving forward. Now, Shadi Lynn has done everything in her power to erase that image from the internet. If you even look in that alternative press article, you'll see that in the tweet that is shared in it, it's no longer available. The photo has disappeared because she went private after people got angry about this photograph. She went private. She refused to talk to anyone about it at first. And rightfully, people were pissed and started protesting and boycotting the brand because they were like, not only do you do something this hurtful during a really tumultuous time right now for BLM, but then you just run scared afterwards instead of addressing what happened. Now... I did manage to find the photograph, despite her best efforts to hide it. And this is it. Not cute. There's literally no other way for you to take this. Of course, she put out an apology, which people still pan to this day for how terrible it was. There's nothing apologetic about it. And you, there's no way. You can look at that photo and take it as anything other than, come near my store and the police will shoot you. And she knew full well what was going on. There were live streams happening every single night. I was watching them during that time. I was watching innocent young black women simply holding signs silently on the side of the road and police grabbing the signs out of their hands and starting to beat them. They were being peaceful. They were doing nothing wrong. Now, after going private, all anyone saw were some black squares on some of the profiles for Dolls Kill. I believe that Instagram was one of them that just said, we stand in solidarity, and that was it. Which people got even more pissed about because they're like, you don't even make a statement. You do something like show a strong police presence in front of your storefront during BLM protests, and then you say you stand in solidarity? Prove it, bitch! When? Where? Haven't seen any of that! So I'm sure by now you're wondering what the actual statement they eventually made was because they sure took their time on it, and it was this, prepare to be annoyed. We fucked up. We should have been quicker and louder. You are right to be upset with us. We were slow to show our support of Black Lives Matter, and we should have done more. First off, that's not what the problem was. It's not that you were slow to show support. You actively showed support for the police that were killing people. That's what you did. That's what people were upset about. Dolls Kill is a company, but first and foremost, a collective of misfits who work to make this brand what it is. And we need to make some things clear. We at Dolls Kill condemn racism, police brutality, violence, bigotry, and hate. In the past, we haven't been outspoken on issues. When customers have spoken out, we've responded by fixing it from the inside, cutting ties with vendors, pulling items from the site, and being more inclusive. We've never spoken publicly because, as a fashion brand, it never felt like our place. But we've learned that silence is complicit. It's not excusable. We hear you. We will change. Again, that paragraph is just filled with outright lies. Anyone who has been aware of Dolls Kill for the last, like, 10 years or so knows full well that they have been flamed in the past for, like I said, things like racism, anti-Semitism, full-on hatred of people outside of anyone that looks like a white person, basically. And maybe they did fix it from the inside, that's not good enough, though. You need to be outspoken. I don't care what kind of brand you are or what you sell. When it's found out that one of your vendors is promoting things like racism on your platform, you have to say something about that. Otherwise, it is complicit. Like she said, it's showing the world that you didn't really care. And by pulling the items from behind the scenes or pulling the vendor, all you're showing is you cared about your profit loss. That's what that looks like to people. We will do whatever we can as a brand to hold ourselves accountable. Dolls Kill is committing $1 million to purchase products from Black-owned fashion brands and designers to feature on our site. Please suggest your favorite brands in our comments section. We will donate a portion of the proceeds to hashtag Black Lives Matter. Jesus Christ, wow. 
What a conclusion. So not a million dollars towards anything like BLM itself. Not a million dollars or more, honestly, toward anything like the Young Black Panthers. Nothing that actually helps. Just a million dollars out of their entire net worth towards promoting black brands, which, one, means they didn't have any black-owned brands on the site before, and that was just an oversight. They never noticed that. Okay, that doesn't make you look very good now, does it? And the fact that they had to ask their customer base, suggest your favorite black-owned alternative brands because they couldn't think of a single one on their own. After this happened, quite a few brands pulled themselves out of Doll's Kill. They were like, we can't align with what these people stand for. They're clearly not really sorry. Again, they're just sorry for their loss of profit and stuff. We're not comfortable with this. Now, a lot of people were frustrated with some brands like Killstar that took until this point to pull out of Doll's Kill because they were like, this isn't the only problematic thing that brand has done. They've done horrible things for years now. How did you stick around this long? But I guess at least they weren't there anymore. It's a start, you know. A lot of brands were like, we're never gonna support Doll's Kill. There's no way you can be okay with things like this. So this next piece of controversy is pretty difficult for me personally. It was really sad for me when I first saw it occur because it involves an individual who is in a wheelchair. For anyone who is new to my channel, I use a wheelchair. If you ever find me in public, I'll be in a wheelchair. And we are often overlooked when it comes to things like modeling or influencing or something. Brands don't want us. They don't see it as desirable. They don't see it as an adequate depiction of what their clothing will look like on a regular body. And it's unfortunate because a lot of us, I think, would do a great job in that line of work. And even though we might not pull the subscriber numbers that non-disabled people do online, we still get enough people who are loyal to us as people that it would be a good idea to send PR. So what happened was there was an influencer, an alternative influencer, who is in a wheelchair. And she got an offer from Dolls Kill for PR, so of course she was excited. Now, I will critique the fact that this was fairly recently, like within a few years of now. And by then, Dolls Kill had done a lot of unsavory things already. They'd already depicted themselves as being racist and anti-Semitic and just all on gross art thieves, all that good stuff. So should she have vetted the brand before accepting PR? Yeah. She may have been new to the brand and only just discovered it and not seen the past. Hopefully she's learned from this and does better at vetting her future PR later on. But she saw it as a great launching point because Dolls Kill is arguably one of the most, if not the most famous brand name in alternative communities. Everyone knows what Dolls Kill is. Everyone knows there's a lot of brands that sell on Dolls Kill and there's something for everybody. So a lot of people would have seen her video said, hey, that's cool. Not only that you have stuff from Dolls Kill, I like Dolls Kill too, but that they had an influencer who is in a wheelchair showcasing their stuff. It looks good for the brand too. Sadly, that's not what happened. I want to say again, now that I'm seeing so many ads for them, Dolls Kill offered me a partnership to send me stuff in exchange for promotion. And when they found out I was in a wheelchair, told because of sizing, they rescinded the offer. I think they're a hideous company. Their excuse was that they messaged too many people, so they don't need any more participants. Okay, fine. Kind of unprofessional. Whatever. But then after the fact, I watched as my peers got excited over getting the same offer I did days after they told me they didn't need anyone else. Who does that, Wall? You don't reach out to send PR and then take it back when it's accepted. And you definitely don't tell someone specifically that the spots are filled, then continue to reach out to new people. Yuck. So, of course, people were pretty horrified when they saw those tweets. They were like, wait a minute, that's blatant ableism. Like, I'm glad that she didn't just post the initial tweet and that she went on to explain the fact that, no, she could tell. She had proof that it was because she's in a wheelchair because you can't claim, oh, we accidentally sent out too much too many PR offers. We actually only meant to send it to a few people. And then show new people who hadn't been offered until afterward gain the PR. 
Did you think she wasn't going to notice that? Do you think the internet wasn't going to notice that? And people started reaching out to Dolls Kill and messaging them and saying they're really disappointed and grossed out that they were treating someone like that. And this is what Dolls Kill said to someone. Hey, babe. Really? All right, we're, we're starting off right there. Because this is something people really nitpicked and got annoyed by. The hey, babe, as the intro to the message back. Even if that is a part of your brand, you kind of talk to people like they're your bestie and stuff, that's fine. Not when it is a professional message about something this serious. This is a serious issue. Someone is accusing you of being an ableist company that refuses to give PR to people because they're in wheelchairs. Hey, babe is hardly an appropriate response to that. Thanks so much for sending this through. We look through all our records and cannot locate any communication with this. We've reached out multiple times to investigate, but there has been no response. We work daily with all different kinds of people. The only requirement to be on our PR list is a kick-ass attitude and good quality social media presence that represents our brand. Thanks for your comment. So not only did they use very unprofessional wording, like I said, for the kind of message this was, but they full-on lied. Because people, of course, then asked the girl, okay, they're claiming that they never communicate with you, they never reached out. So who is lying? Is it you or is it Dolls Kill? And she was like, receipts, anybody? Here it is. This is Major Dolls Kill loves you. Let's collab. Hey, doll, I'm reaching out to you on behalf of at Dolls Kill. I'm absolutely in love with your Instagram. Your style is perfect and your IG will fit perfectly with our looks. I would love for you to select a few pieces and show them off on your IG. We always have new collections and can't wait to get you started. Select three to four items from the newest selected items. And then it shows all the different links. Make sure to include your shipping information and sizes. Make sure to also include your social media links, IG, and or YT. She even showed the name of the person corresponding with her. And this one says, hey, love, thanks so much for your response. We had such a huge response for this and now are completely overwhelmed. We are now full for this campaign, but I will keep your email and reach out again. However, I will reach out to you ASAP to do another campaign. Thanks so much. This was after her saying her sizing and explained that she was in a wheelchair. Suddenly, oh! we don't need you anymore and how is she or anyone else supposed to take this dolls kill doesn't have the luxury of being offended that people automatically assume they were being ableist ever the way that they've behaved now after this there was a lot of back and forth dolls kill was trying to save face in the worst ways possible and the original poster was trying to defend herself and show more and more receipts as more receipts came out dolls kill started to sweat and it is thought allegedly that they had their entire team mass report her account so it ended up being suspended on twitter so that she couldn't share receipts anymore instead of learning something they had people mass report her account and it said we have determined that this account violated the twitter rules specifically for violating our rules against posting private information and she says (laughs) she goes up the bane now I have been sent screens of them manipulating their influencers who are standing up for me by dangling paid work in their face and then being like, oh, we saw that you believe that girl. Do you still want this job? Fucking despicable. My tweet went viral so fast because y'all are awful. Now, of course, it sucks that her original Twitter account was suspended, but nothing could stop her from making a new one because she deserved to have her story told. She deserved to show people what Dolls Kill actually stands for. I am not now able to get back into my Twitter until I delete the actual proof of what Dolls Kill did to me. They've also blocked me on Instagram and continue to hide behind and even praise customers' accusations that didn't happen. And she shows proof of that. Honestly, again, after all the receipts that she provided, there is no way to take this any way other than Dolls Kill is ableist and they don't want people in wheelchairs promoting their stuff. Fuck Dolls Kill. Please don't support them. Please give your money to literally anyone else and potentially don't even support the brands that are okay with being on their platform. Those brands know what Dolls Kill has been accused of, yet they still allow their merchandise to be sold on it. What does that say about those brands? Not very inclusive of them, is it? So yeah, just don't give them your money. They're a horrible company that has done nothing but horrible things to people over the years. But hopefully you learned something from this video. I don't even think I have to get into the sustainability and ethics of it. Outside of Dolls Kill's own brand, it's kind of hard with a brand like Dolls Kill that has a lot of brands on their website because you'd have to vet every single one. But 
given how shitty they are to most people, I doubt they're that sustainable. But I'll be leaving links for everything I was talking about in the description box down below. I appreciate anyone who stuck through this entire video. I know it's pretty angry compared to the Killstar one. And until next time, do something that makes you happy today, so long as you're not hurting anyone else in the process. And I'll see all of you again soon.